Originally, this call came out for the possible uh, suicide, so uh, I was hoping just to make contact with him for his welfare and make sure that he was okay. And the situation just escalated into a uh, man with a gun to um, false imprisonment, and it just something simple just escalated into something even more when it didn't need to be. Get us in. Pull on the rope. Stephanie, she drive the car? No the car. car. He says she's female and got one child. When we found out that uh, he had eyes on us and that he had a firearm, that definitely escalates the situation and, and makes your emotions kind of go into high gear because you don't know what's going to happen. We just have to manage and deal with the situation as it comes along and adapt and mold, know when to escalate and when to de-escalate. I feel pretty bad for the uh, female that lived in the home and the infant because she was being told not to answer the door. We had to take the means necessary to kick the door in and to make them safe when he could have just let let it go easy and open the door for us. A few weeks ago, he texted me that he was in my house okay. and he knew where my medications were and he stole everything. Michael's usually not a bad guy. In any way, shape or form, did he tell you what to do or what you couldn't do? Yeah, he told me not to answer the door. Okay, when we were at the door, right. you mean? All right. right, and I said, I, I said, that's a cop knock, Michael. Did this have something in it prior to him being here today? This is the pill ball that we found in the closet above right where it was. We found this one, it's only got one pill left in it. Was there more than that in there? Oh my God, yeah. The suspect's demeanor in this type of call, he, was, he wasn't cooperative, he wouldn't listen, he wouldn't comply. When asked to, you know, pop your head up, show us where you are, he just, he wouldn't, he wouldn't do so. He was constantly lying through the whole situation. He didn't want us to find him, but unfortunately technology found him and helped us out to where we could find him. And the moment the cuffs were on and he was in the back of the vehicle, he was all compliant. He was cooperative and uh, still lying. Your typical criminal couldn't tell the truth. The belt I saw in the ground. Yeah, I put, put it up there. there. I put it up there. And I said, this is what I could do. Okay. You know, and I said, that's why I feel, this is why I feel what, where we're going right now. And she said, well, then I'm going to call him and tell him you do. And I said, don't call him and tell him because I'm not going to do it. I'm just telling you, this is how far out, how bad I feel is where we've gone right now. Okay, and, and when she told me that you had a firearm, you did not have a firearm. No, you sir. did not go over to that no, house went over to there. House there went to that. When my partner and I received the call, we were basically the only ones going to be on this call uh, to try to... Uh, make contact with the uh, subject but it's amazing how within seconds uh, for a call out for help a perimeter is, is built where we can take control and try to keep our community safe from a possible shooter.